But this time, it's different. This time it's different. I will. I'm late. Can't abide tardiness, even in myself. That's all right, Senator Simpson. The wedding breakfast is still going on. Too bad I missed the wedding. Oh, you're still in time for the wedding. You're not the one that missed it. What's that you say? It hasn't happened yet. Wedding breakfast before the wedding? Curious. That's what everybody thinks. What? Huh? Senator Simpson, I'm so glad you were able to come. Well, I wasn't going to miss the only chance I'll probably ever have to kiss the bride. <laughs> come and have something to eat. Oh, wait, I, I want to shake hands with the groom first. Oh, uh, Sonny, well, he isn't here yet. What? Oh, dear Jimmy, I knew you at least wouldn't desert us. Mother! How are you, Eliza? Very well. Sonny thanks. hasn't deserted us. It's just that his ship hasn't docked yet. He'll be here just as soon as he can make it. But, darling, I didn't mean... Oh, dear. It does seem odd, serving the wedding breakfast but before the wedding. We really haven't anything to celebrate, have we? Well, uh... Oh, Mr. Stanley? No, thanks, no. Oh, everybody's been here for hours. I was afraid they wouldn't stick it out, unless we send them. Yes, that was a very good idea. But I don't know why they should stay after we feed them, unless we hold back on the ice cream. Exactly. You know, you, you've got a most marvelous spread here. <laughs> Well, I told everyone not to accept the wedding invitation unless they contributed food coupons. Well, that was a brainwave. <laughs> I thought so. There you are, darling. Uh, now, wait till I get you a bit. Have you everything you want, Peter? I have not, and you know it. It seems to me Sonny's father might be here at least. Exactly. You know, someone ought to be here to represent his family as an evidence of good faith. Colonel Fife is a big financier. He phoned to say that he was terribly sorry, but he had a very important engagement which might interfere. Oh. <laughs> Just wait, Saunders. Yes, Colonel Fife. Well, hello, Mike. I believe I owe you a few dollars. You do. Fifteen bucks, to be exact. Yes. Have we got a change of twenty? I have. Well, thanks, Mike. Now I owe you twenty. You again. Well, I haven't seen my kid in a year. Isn't the ship in yet? Within 20 minutes. Well, I must speak to my wife first, then I'll be on my way. Oh, this is impossible. I can't sing while he looks at me. Again, you're my life. Thousands of people will be looking at you, madame. Not that way. <laughs> I can't sing this tomorrow night anyway. But you must sing it. I have already announced the opera. Who else have I got to sing it? No, no. The public expects great performance from me. And he plays this court deliberately to distract me. I play this court. You see? He admits it. I did not play this court. I couldn't play this court. 
stuff is not the way it goes. But that's how you play that. Oh, monster, you did that. It's a sacrilegious. Even you noticed it, eh? No, I didn't. Ha! You see, even your own husband. What do you know about music? Well, Genya, my lamb, I was only trying to make the best of a very Isn't bad... Is this how I played it? I don't know. I didn't hear it. No wonder you couldn't hear it. She bellowed so loud, you couldn't hear what I'm playing. I bellow? Like a cow. Oh. Now, what is it? What do you want? Again, you, my lamb, can you spare me 25 bucks? A friend of mine is getting married. And why must you pay for the wedding? Are they marrying to oblige you? Well, of course not, darling. I simply want to buy them a little present. For which I am to pay. Why don't you buy it out of your allowance? You have no expenses. Your living is provided. What do you do with that $25 a week I give you? What does it do for it? Oh, never mind. Forget the whole thing. Now, come. Let's get on with the rehearsal. Madame Smetana? Yes? That mustache fooled me. Just coming in. Yes, I noticed it. Slick looking car you've got out there. The fellow's demonstrating it for me. I want the kid to think I'm doing all right. The kid. I'm mighty proud of that boy of yours, aren't you? Why not? Look, Bill, attend to a small commission for me, will you? Have one of your satellites, send some flowers to my wife, and slip this card in. Then say, uh, ten bucks. Where do I get the ten bucks? Wait, tap the till. I'll settle later. Uh. Here they come now. So long, Bill. Pardon me, Colonel Fife. Yes? Uh, we don't figure on spending more than an hour on a demonstration. Of course, of course, my boy. I understand perfectly. I'm meeting a young man here in a few minutes, and I'd like his approval. Okay, Colonel. Hey, Benny. Huh? Go get some flowers for me and take them up to Madame Smetana, the opera singer. And slip this card in, see? You're aiming kind of high, ain't you? Spend five bucks and spend it all. What do you mean I'm as honest as you are? That's what's worrying me. Hi, Dad. Well, hello, son. You're a little late, aren't you? Yeah, gee, about three hours. I don't know what Janie will be thinking. Dad, she's such a sweetheart, I wouldn't have her upset for anything in the world. Come on, let's grab a cab. I've got my car here. Your car? You mean that's your car? Not a bad-looking job, is it? Wait a minute, Dad. Pony oil stocks or homemade gold bricks? Oh, nothing like that, my boy. I can find myself now to more legitimate racket. Well, I hope so. <laughs> I put it all over those wolves on Wall Street. I can make money down there just like that. Now, that's swell. Say, by the way, where's your luggage? Oh. Oh. <laughs> I think you like this car, sir. The lights come on when you open the door. Of course, that bulb's burnt out right now, but the upholstery's in fine shape. And the springs are perfect. Try them out. Go ahead, bounce. Bounce on them. It's very nice. The enthusiastic chap, Saunders. Yes. Yeah, all right, Saunders, 16, have a Meyer place. Oh, and there's an electric cigarette lighter over there in the ashtray, at least there was. And there's a glass partition that goes up and down and, well, I guess it's stuck right now. Well, that's all very interesting. Now, let's see how much speed it'll make. Oh, she'll easily do 90. But there's a war on, you know. So I've heard. Gosh, it's awful keeping Janie waiting so long. Well, you shouldn't have set the date for the wedding until you were sure when you'd arrive. I thought I did know. And I've only got a two-day leave. I don't want to waste a minute of it. I can understand that. I've been away at sea almost 10 months. I can see what you mean, buddy. My dear, my dear, I must speak to your mother. I'm in such a jam, and I, I can't blame anyone but myself. For what, Dr. Agnew? The Offenberger twins. What? Oh, oh, well, I did make a mild protest, but Molly Offenberger was so insistent, and, uh, well, I, I do have a bicycle. But I don't understand. At the christening. I didn't realize the wedding would be so delayed. They're waiting, you see. I have been waiting, I'm afraid, for, oh, for over an hour now. Well, nothing awful can happen if a christening's postponed. A wedding's different. You see, Sonny's a sailor. Oh. I tell you what, I know it isn't usual to combine a wedding and a christening. No, no, it isn't. But we could have the christening here. Why not? And then you can be here whenever Sonny comes. And it will keep the guests entertained until Sonny gets here. So you've settled down at last. Yes, my gay days are over. My uh, wife is a very prominent woman. Your what? Well, yes, I was married six months ago to an opera singer, Genya Smetana. Oh, I never knew you were that fond of music. Yes, it must have been the music. Of course, you know she's secondhand, but she hasn't been used much. Huh? The car. Oh. 
The last guy I had, I took excellent care of her. Hardly a mark on her. That's well. Oh, there's a few scratches here and there and a cigarette burn on her back seat. The car? The car. Oh, I suppose I'll meet your wife at the wedding. No, as a matter of fact, I don't think you'll ever meet Genya. Pity. She's just been completely overhauled, got a new paint job, too. The car? Yeah, sure, but why won't I meet my new stepmother? Well, to tell you the truth, Sonny, she's considerably younger, and she thinks I'm only 42. Now, a simple calculation will prove to you that I couldn't have a son 29. Oh, I see. So you've concealed the fact from her that I exist. I had to, Sonny. I hope you don't mind. Oh, of course not, Dad, if you're happy with her. Well, I wouldn't say that, but I'm much more comfortable with her than without her. She's thoroughly lubricated and got a tank full. The so car! Here they are, the Offenberger twins. Oh, how exciting. The twins have arrived. Well, we're all doubling up in production these days, oh. huh? <laughs> oh, aren't they sweet? Let me see them. The twins oh. are so practical. It's always so nice to have a spare. Oh, exactly alike. Are they boys or girls? Oh, one's a boy and one's a girl. We're going to call them Johnny and Betty. Oh. How do you know which is Johnny and which is Betty? Johnny has a mole. Oh. <laughs> how about some pictures of you while you're waiting, Miss Prescott? Oh, uh, how about some pictures of the twins? Oh, Janie, why not you with the twins? Oh, and that would be an unusual wedding picture. <laughs> <laughs> as fast as she can stop on a dime. On a nickel, even. What about the car? I don't think he liked it. What a pity. A pity, he says. A pity, he says. Here's a little bouquet I picked up for you to present to the bride. I knew you wouldn't have time to attend to it. Gosh, Dad, thanks. I hope I'm not too late. Come on, Dan. <laughs> now, how about one more? Uh-oh. Sonny! Sonny! Oh, uh, I'm so sorry. Would you mind? Uh, are they all right? Yes. Oh, Sonny! Oh, you know Dad, of course. Of course, I've just presented him with twins. Yes. Uh, the Offenberger twins. Oh, 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 oh. Here's some flowers for you. Oh, Sonny, he shouldn't have done this. Oh, a diamond clip. Oh, this is a surprise. It is a surprise. Oh, hey. Look, Mother. Isn't it exquisite? It's the loveliest of all my gifts. Oh. Now, we're all going into the drawing room and get the ceremony over, and then we'll come back in here for the wedding breakfast. Business before pleasure. Let's stay here a minute, just family. Before you marry Janie, there's something Peter thinks you ought to know. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. What's this, Mom? Well, you see, Janie, you know how Peter has always helped me with my investment. Yes. So when he came in the other day and offered to trade half of his Atlas International Copper for all of my T&W, I couldn't turn down such a bargain. What? Naturally, my T&W was worth only $100 a share, while his Atlas International Copper had $250 engraved right on it. Yes, but didn't you know that Atlas International Copper is absolutely worthless? Of course I didn't. I trusted Peter, the little schemer. Mother. You mean to say he took advantage of your faith in him to swindle you out of all your money? Well, yes, you might put it that way, crudely. I do put it that way, crudely. But you see, Sonny, I still had $50,000 in my savings account. Did you say had? Yes, darling, had. Oh, I wonder how Peter happened to overlook that. He didn't. But, Mother, that money was for an emergency. Exactly. And Peter pointed out that this was an emergency. So I drew $10,000, and he took me to the 59 Club. Oi. To a gambling place. What did he take you there for? He took it for the 50,000 to play roulette. A fascinating game. You bet on numbers, and if you guess right, you win a fortune. Only you didn't guess right. No. no. But that wasn't Peter's fault. But at least you have the 40,000 left. Well, uh, <laughs> not quite. And he told you that if you tried again, you might recoup your losses and win a lot more. Yes. <laughs> How did you guess? But... <laughs> How much do you have now in actual cash? In actual cash? Well, about, um, $1,300. What? <laughs> Mother, why haven't you told me all this? Peter didn't want me to. He said he could handle you after Sonny broke the engagement. After I what? Broke the engagement? Well, you see, Peter did this on purpose. He wanted to make me lose everything. That's exactly right. Because I think you're only marrying Janie for her money. You pig. You think and that... I don't intend for you to get your hands on a cent of it. Why, you sniveling little buzzard. Oh, you... Sonny. 
someday I'm going to punch you right in the nose. I intend to pay it all back. You bet you're going to pay it all back. When Janie marries me, and she hasn't got a chance to get any of it until she does. Amateur blackmailer. Well, now get this, you. She isn't going to marry you. She's going to marry me in about three minutes. And nothing you can say or do is going to stop her, right? Right. Going to live on your Navy pay? Why not? We can, can't we? Why, of course we can. At least I think so. And what about her mother? I don't want them to consider me. This house will have to be sold, you know, and you've lived here all your life. And you'll have to dispose of your cars. Well, I can find some small, inexpensive, but charming apartment with room service and some rice. Oh, darling. Now there, you see? I knew Janie wouldn't consent to let her mother go out and earn her own living at her age. I can still get a defense job. Riveting. Well, you get it all figured out, haven't you? Think you've got me stopped? Yes, I think I have. You made one small miscalculation, young fella. You didn't stop to think that I might have something to say about all this. You, Dad? Yes, I, me. I'm just the type that shines in a tight spot. Why, you don't think, son, that I'd stand by and see this dizzy drip hijack your Jane? Well, sure, that's right, isn't it, uh. Dad? Say, my dad put it all over the wolves in Wall Street. Why, well, he'll get that money back for you just like that, won't you, Dad? Well, well I sure don't... I knew you would, Dad. And let me tell you something else. If my dad says he'd do it, he'll do it. Oh, really? How wonderful. In two days, before you go back to your ship? Well, don't worry about that. We'll do it in two days, won't you, Dad? Well, it's just as easy in two days as two years. Hey, you see what I tell you? Oh, hooray. Oh, you are wonderful. Come on, Mother. Pity you can tell them to start the wedding march. You have to precede the bridesmaid, Sonny. Yes, all right, all right. Now, remember, Dad, I'm depending on you. I won't have a bean for Janie when I go back to my ship. You've got to get this money for her. I've grasped that. Now, don't keep reminding me. Well, I've got everything tied up in my honeymoon. Well, maybe it'll be worth it. <laughs> Wedding breakfast after the ceremony. Uh, here. That is all mistake. No. Positivity? No, no, no. It's for her. Again, you smetna. Smetana. Oh, yeah, charming. Yeah. You like my singing? That's why you brought me the floral offering, is that it? Oh, no. I, I got better uses for my dough. Well, <laughs> so long. Just to tell you what we think of you, Genia. The management. I'm faded, am I? I'm finished. I stink! Send for the manager. You manager? Yes. Positivity. Now, you come to treat you. I'm going to show you my job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Senator Simpson, I want you to know my husband. Janie's told me a lot about you, young man. Seems to admire you. Oh, nonsense, sir. She's absolutely an impartial witness. <laughs> Not his looks I admire, it's his character and disposition. Oh, uh, must be. <laughs> <laughs> I beg your pardon. Haven't I seen you before? Yes. I suppose you're hurrying off to get my money back. Yes. <laughs> well, don't go near the 59 Club. Not likely. I happen to know the table there is crooked. No. Sure. They've got a magnet underneath that works by electricity. All the croupier has to do is to press the button on the inlay to make the ball stop anywhere he likes. Well, I must tell Peter. He'd be stunned. Eh? About the magnet. Magnets? Yes, you were telling me. That's it. Thank you very much. You've given me just the idea I've been looking for. Have I really? Miss <laughs> Dad. Son of a gun. Oh, you doing, huh? Hi, Les. I'm all right, I guess. Say, how do you like being married and respectable, huh? Well, it's a novelty. No <laughs> doubt about it. Thanks, Bill. I'll try that out tonight, huh? You bet. Anybody around here? Nobody I know, huh? Well, I, I want to make sure. How would you like to make some easy money? Don't I look like I have all my faculties? And more. <laughs> how well do you know Eddie Brunson? Never mind that now. Stick to business. You know, uh, Eddie gimmicks the table here. I mean, he sets the magnet under it and keeps it running properly. Oh, Angel, there are things about Eddie I could tell you. 
Supposing that another magnet were installed under there some night, a stronger one, that I could work uh, from one of these inlays from this side of the table. Uh-oh. Then the ball wouldn't stop where the croupier wanted it to, but where you wanted it to. You'd make a cleaner. Yes, and Eddie and I'd be looking for new jobs. <laughs> no thanks, honey. But tell the truth, which I seldom do. <laughs> I'm tired of leaving towns in a hurry. Oh, it does get to be a nuisance. Say, how come you're drifting now that you're so safely and snugly anchored, huh? My kid. Do you remember my kid? Oh, sure, the kid. How could I forget him? Oh, you were in such a lather to keep him in the best schools and put up a big front when he came home on the holidays. Well, he's in the Navy now. No. Yeah. Oh, well, anything for the boys in service. Anything within reason, that is. Mm, anything. <laughs> <laughs> when do you want to come in and win? Tomorrow night. I'll play for big stakes, and one-third of the win is yours. It's a deal. Now, I've just got time to catch Eddie. You go call a taxi, and I'll phone him and tell him to wait for me. Right. Taxi! Hector! Genia, my lamb! What are you doing down here in this neighborhood alone? I'm walking to get a little air and exercise. But after your long rehearsal, you should be home resting. Now, you get in this cab at once. Oh. But you were going somewhere in it. Not at all. I called it for you when I saw you coming. You really must take better care of your health, for my sake. Driver, Beverly Arms. Aren't you coming with me? Not now. I have a business appointment. Bye-bye, oh, Lamekin. Bye. Oh, taxi, taxi. There's somebody in that cab. In times like this, we have to share cabs. Oh, Eddie's going out of town, so we've got to keep our date tonight. Tonight? Mm -hmm. But that's going to be a little awkward. Oh, darling, I'm sorry, but if you want to do it, it's got to be tonight. Very well, then. Tonight. You know what this is going to cost you, Bunnykin. I know better than you do. Oh, never mind. It'll be worth it. I'm so sorry to keep you waiting. What does that matter that you keep me waiting? But I couldn't very well leave an old friend Oh, without... he's an old friend. But he's the uh, first man I ever loved. So? Of course, neither of us the type to be faithful. Really? But I'd do anything for him, and he'd do anything for me. <laughs> funny, isn't it? <laughs> very funny. <laughs> I didn't know it was that funny. <laughs> That's what's so funny that you don't know how funny it is. Repeat, please. I happen to be his wife. Oh, well, you... You are Smetana? Well, <laughs> well, uh, this is such a coincidence. I happen to be your greatest admirer. Indeed. Then perhaps you can explain well, what... Well, you see, I think you're the greatest of all Wagnerian singers. No, really? Yes, and if you knew how I feel about Wagner... Ach, Wagner. Ach, if he could only hear you sing. You think so? Mm -hmm. I think so, too. Wagner, he's my idol. Oh, you have such tone, such timbre. Such volume. It's kind of you to say it. I'm awfully sorry, but I have to get out here. We must have tea one day and talk of music. Oh, I'd adore it. I'll give you a ring. Yes, do. You can get my telephone number from my husband. Uh-oh. Why, oh, just remember. Wait! Wait! Goodbye. What's there with you and my husband? Thanks for sharing the taxi and, uh, everything. Incredible! You're sure it's not a mistake to go to the Briar Cliff on your honeymoon? Of course not. Why should it be? Way out there in the country. What is there to do? We'll walk, and swim, and ride. Aren't you ready yet, Janie? Just a minute. I'll finish that. That's all right, darling. I, I know, but I'm rather do it myself. Oh, 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 I see. Of course. I'll wait for you downstairs. Oh. They're almost ready. They'll be down in a moment or two. Has everyone got right? I'm afraid the bags are a little small, but we can't waste food these days, can we? <laughs> you. Janie. What? Janie, we're married. I know it, but I can't realize it. You're not scared, are you? A little. Are you? Uh-huh. You know, it's kind of a responsibility to take on. I mean, a girl like you. Are you sorry? Oh, gosh, no. Well, we can be together now anytime we like. Night or day. <sighs> Nobody can say anything. And I can kiss you in front of your mother, the senator, and thumb my nose at all of them. Why, Sonny? I'm sure they'll be down in a moment. I can't think what's keeping them. 
we had an apartment, we could spend our honeymoon right here in town. Well, aren't you going to live here with your mother after I go back? No, I, I think I'd rather have my own place. I'll ask Dad to get us an apartment. He's pretty slick at that sort of thing. <laughs> Wonderful. Say, we're wasting time. That's right. Well, hurry up. Right. Where's your bag? Oh, uh, two down there and one up here. Is this all you're taking? But no, silly. I've got two trucks in the car. I didn't think you could get along with just three bags. <laughs> You will make her happy, won't you? I'll do everything I can. <laughs> there they go. Bye. 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 Sorry, my boy, but you can't start your honeymoon yet. What do you mean I can't start my honeymoon yet? Well, you want me to get that money back for Jenny and the mother, don't you? Well, of course I do. Well, then but... you'll have to come with me for an hour or two now. And leave me here. Oh, oh. Goodbye. 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 But after all, your whole future's at stake, and I haven't very much time. I know, Dad, but we haven't very much time either. I'm wondering why we aren't starting. Goodbye. 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 After all, Jane, you will be with your friends. That's what's so awful about it. They'll ask me questions. What can I tell them? What can she tell them? What does it matter what you tell them? Come on. Goodbye. 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 Janie, you better have a floor take the back. I wonder if there's anything wrong. They should have come. What is it, darling? What's happened? Well, isn't it ridiculous? I'm an abandoned woman. Where did oh. your husband go? Well, he was suddenly called away on a, on a very important government mission. Oh. Then he is coming back. Well, of course, darling, oh. in a little while. Oh, well, let's go on celebrating till he comes back. Oh. Eh? Oh. <laughs> What is it that we have to do, Dad, and why must we do it tonight? Numerology, my boy. Numerology? What in How the... do you suppose I got to the top in less than a year? Numerology? Do you know that the hairs in your head are numbered? Yeah? Well, maybe so, Dad, but I still don't... Tonight is a special night. Yes, I thought it was going to be. There are electrical forces working tonight, magnetic forces. Is that so? If we take advantage of them, we can win back some of the money Mrs. Prescott lost. How? By playing roulette. What? By betting on certain numbers. Three, six, nine, or any combination thereof. I tell you, my boy, if we do, we can't lose. Yeah. And where are we going to do all this? At the 59 Club, of course, where she lost it. You trying to better your record, Mr. Warrington? No, it's a question of thinking or drinking, Dan, and I prefer drinking. Well, who wouldn't? Did you ever lose your best girl, Dan? Often. Is that what happened to you? Yeah, that's what. Well, why didn't you say you were celebrating? I loved you too little, too late, baby, maybe. Can tell. I guess that I gambled with fate, not too wildly, nor too well. One little lover's wrong, and look what happened now. I never dreamed, dear, that it would mean farewell. I knew that romance was a game that I shouldn't underrate. But here I am left with the same old blues I hate to contemplate. Have you a twin sister? I didn't count the cost. I tossed a coin and lost and found that I loved you too little too late What's happened? Where's Janie? We didn't bring Janie. We came on business. You mean to say you left her alone on her wedding night? Of course not. Her mother's with you. Well, uh, what do you mean? You came here on business. We came to get back some of the money Mrs. Prescott lost here. You mean to say you hope to get it back in this joint? This is where she lost it. And found that I loved you too little and too late. Hello, Peter. Why, hello, Tony. I want you to meet a couple of friends of mine, big plungers. Really? Well, come this way, gentlemen, please. 
Hey, we're going to rook you out of a fortune tonight. That's so. Yes, sir. We've got a system, haven't we, Dad? That's right. Numerology. What? Got uh, plenty of money on hand, Angus? These uh, gentlemen are big plungers. I think I can take care of them. Good, good. And I'll tell a croupier to take the limit off for you. Thank you. Just a second, please. Uh, Sonny, uh, how much money have you got to bet? Well, I got a couple of hundred dollars. Is that all? Well, it'll have to do. Oh, wait a minute, Dad. I think we better try your system out with, say, uh, ten bucks. Ten bucks? Well, you're wasting my time. Do you want to stay here all night? Definitely not. But you know I don't believe in gambling. Oh, this isn't gambling. A uh, thousand in fifties and hundreds. Uh, just the same, I've got to be sure. We'll start with ten. Uh, give me uh, one ten dollar chip. One? Wouldn't you rather have a lemonade with a cherry in it? Listen, brother, one look at your kisser has the same effect on me. Now, if you're on a number that wins, they pay you 35 times your money. They do? Sure. Now, remember, three, six, nine, or any combination thereof. Three. Janie and me plus one. Well, uh, why don't you come on over to the club and join me? You don't have to gamble. We couldn't possibly do that, Peter. It's Peter. He wants us to join him at the 59 Club. Well, I must say that'd be better than sitting around here. My chair is up a bit past the time. Well, he's right, Mom. You two run along. I'll stay here and wait for Sonny. Oh, nonsense. If he's on government business, there's no telling how long he'll be. I'll wager we'll have you back before he gets here. Do you think we could? Sure. You might leave a note for Sunday, darling, and have him phone you there. But naturally, Mother, I wouldn't think of going. Oh. Wait for us downstairs, Jimmy. Right you are. Thank you, Peter. We'll be right over. Good. I've got a little surprise for you. Oh. Darling, you want the Senator to get Sonny on his friend's ship, don't you? Well, of course I do, darling. Well, then, sweetie, you've simply got to be nice to Jimmy. Well, gentlemen, where would you like to sit? Well, somewhere near the croupier. Just, just a minute, please. No more beds. Surely. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thirteen black. Thirteen, the winner. Black. Thirteen? That's not three, six, nine, or any combination thereof. Of course not. Those are your lucky numbers. Place your bets, please. Oh, my lucky numbers. Place your bets, please. All bets down. You sure I'll win? I'll risk every cent you've got on it. Okay. No, no. Over there, number three. All bets down. Three reds. I won. I won. Hey, pay me. Pay me there. I won. How much did I win? Uh, Three hundred and sixty dollars. Three hundred and sixty dollars. Gee, I should have got my whole two hundred. Leave the whole three hundred and sixty up this time. All of it? Well, if you lose, you're still only out ten bucks. Well, how much would I win if I took back my original ten bucks? See, uh, twelve thousand two hundred and fifty dollars. Oh, I'll try a hundred. Place your bets, please. All bets down. $3,500. Incredible. Somebody has to win sometime. The law of averages, you know. <laughs> hey, I won more than this. Wait a minute. Those brown ones are worth $1,500 each. Oh, $1,500. Let's plunge. That's the spirit. Leave it all on this time. How much do I win if I leave it all on? $126,000. A hundred to... Hundred... <laughs> Don't Such luck can't last. Not three times in succession. How about staking half of it? All right. All right, half of it. Half of uh, uh, That's about $2,000 in round numbers. See, what do you call your system? Numerology. <laughs> it's wonderful. You can't lose. So. Place your bet. I'm going to put... You know, I've seen that girl somewhere before. She's a very particular friend of the director who's making this picture. He sticks to it in every scene he can. Mother, shh. Oh. Somebody might hear you. Why, hello there. Oh, hello, Peter. Why, Janie, I never expected to see you here. Look, why don't we all go in the other room? 
Sonny left us just as they were starting on their honeymoon. He didn't leave me, Mother. He merely had to attend to some pressing business for the government. Oh, yeah? Well, I don't trust that fellow. He's the most honest person I know. You can believe every word he says. And he's on a government mission? He certainly is. They suspect something. Get out of here. No morality. I never knew you could depend on it before. Yeah, yeah. Give me some. Oh, hello. Hello. This is outrageous. To leave you right after the wedding ceremony and come here again. But he has a good reason. Good enough to make him postpone his honeymoon? Of course. He's, he's here to, to watch somebody, aren't you, sir? Huh? Oh, yes. Yes, yes, that's right. Oh, hello, Senator. How are you? Nice to see you. Hmm. And has incredible luck. Yes, he always has. Oh, Mrs. Prescott, uh, may I present Mr. Michelangelo? How do you do? Michelangelo? It's a very familiar name. Aren't you well? You look as if you'd had a shock. I have. Oh, you poor man. Have you taken anything? No, I've lost everything. Oh, well, what you need is a good psychic. Well, you want to know what's caused your trouble, don't you? It must have been a short circuit. What? Say, have... Have you ever heard of numerology? Oh, yes, I took it once from a red-haired Egyptian with green eyes. <laughs> I think he was an Irishman, really. Oh, none of this is actually happening. It must be a dream. Oh, I know what's wrong with you. You've been losing money at roulette. Yeah, plenty. Didn't you know this table is crooked? Uh-huh. Well, of course. It has a magnet right underneath it. The croupier can stop the ball wherever he wants to. Who told you this? This gentleman here, Colonel Fyke. Uh -huh. Let's go and cash these in. Just a minute, boy. Who is it that you're watching? Huh? Make your bets, please. Make your bets. Well, that's a military secret. And but yes. son is in the Navy. Well, that shows how versatile he is. There she is, sitting down at the end of the table. No more bets. No more bets. What? Why, that's the wife of old Senator Binns. I know. What are you watching her for? What are you watching her for? Oh. Come on, Sonny. Let's all go have a drink. At the bar. I love drinks at the bar. Uh-oh. Be careful with that stuff. Hi, Les. Hi, pardon. I'm my numerologist. Oh, I have a little something for you. Oh, I hope it's not too little. I can't stand anything too little. That includes diamonds, money, and uh, men. I promised her a third. We couldn't have won, you know, without her assistance. Oh, well, that's fair enough. Uh, why haven't we met before? You're one little number. I haven't had the chance to study. Uh, I don't suppose you'd do anything except on certain days. Well, uh, that all depends on the inducement. Why don't you try tempting me? Dad, just a moment, son. $73,850. Here's $10, Sunday. Now, you buy yourself a lemonade with a cherry in it. Now, uh... Uh, Mir, how much have you got for me? Now, here's the $50,000 back that your mother-in-law lost here. And here's $23,850 for you. It's a little short. Well, so am I, so we won't quibble. That's worth a big kiss. Suppose it had been five times that much. You suppose it, sailor. Hector! My wife, stand by to render first aid. I'm sure you'll both be very happy. There's nothing like married life, nothing. Oh, hello, my lamb. You're just in time to congratulate my young friend here. Friend? Uh, he was married today. You look very pleased about it, judging by that kiss. Oh, don't be a silly filly. That kiss was simply a Just little... by the way of congratulations, sir. Yeah. Why not? It seems strange that you are so happy over this marriage. The groom doesn't look so pleased. Say, look here. She oh, thinks that I... We can't help what she thinks. Mm -hmm. yes, no, you see, he's still dazed by his good fortune. Come, honey bun, I want to dance with my newest, handsomest husband. He looks yeah, but... okay. Now, I would like to know what you meant by running off and leaving me this afternoon. Say, look here. My wife's around here someplace. Another wife? Well, never mind. I'm broad-minded. Yes, but she's got her mother and Senator Simpson with her, and they may not be. But you've got to help your dad. Think of how he's helped you all your life. And that woman he's married to, she, she's half wildcat. Yes, but she's not watching us, is she? If you think not, try getting away. Oh, Tom Collins. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Collins? Darling, his name isn't Collins. Well, why did you say it was? Oh, I didn't. 
lady. The name is Dan Hannigan. Uh, if it matters. Oh, <laughs> darling, let's forget it. Yes. yes, just pretend it never happened. Let's start all over, shall we? Now, what'll you have, Liza? How about a horse's neck? Oh, I didn't bring my coupon book. I could make a pink lady or a black willow. <laughs> Suppose I give her an old nay punch. What? If you do, she'll scream. Well, there must be something you'd like to try. I know. A Mickey Finn. Mickey Finn. I'll be back. <laughs> oh, he did a double take like in the movies. That's right. I wonder if it's hard to do. No, it's, it's this way, isn't it? <laughs> More like this, isn't it? Oh, that's splendid. You try it, dear. Nothing to it at all. I suppose he's got a good reason for that, too. Undoubtedly. And I can guess what it is. You don't suppose he wants to be doing that, do you? Frankly, yes. He's obviously obeying orders, trying to find out something. Well, she can teach him plenty. I loved you too little, too late. Maybe, maybe, who can tell? I guess that I gambled with fate. Not too wildly, nor too well. One little lover's wrong. <laughs> and look what's happened now. I never dreamed, dear, that it would mean farewell. Bye-bye, baby, baby, bye-bye. I knew that romance was a game that I shouldn't underrate. But here I am left with the same old blues I had to contemplate. I didn't count the cost. I tossed a coin and lost and found that I loved you too little and too late. I was too upset before to offer you my congratulations. Thank you so very much. Sweet of you. Come to the bar and we celebrate. Oh, see? oh uh, well, I'm, uh, I'm very sorry, but I can't go to the bar just now. No, no, you see, uh, uh, there's a woman there he'd rather not meet. Yes. Oh, some other time. Yes, uh, but we'll give you a ring. Look, it's flowers and diamond and clip. My clip? Yes. No, where? Sure. On the table, but a woman. No, it's not. <laughs> Sorry to disturb you. I am Genia Smetana. You are what? Well, won't you sit down? Thank you. Allow me. I have been admiring the diamond clip. It is beautiful, isn't it? It's a wedding gift. Indeed. Given to you by a person named Five Perfect? Why, yes, my husband. Your husband? Impossible. He's my husband. Your husband? He married me six months ago. Legally? What do you think? Then, then he's got two wives. What? He married this child today. I'll go and get him. Wretch. He said he had to buy a present for a wedding, but he didn't say his wedding. Don't believe a word of all this. That's right, darling. Neither do I. Why should he marry her? Why shouldn't he marry me? He must be considerably younger. This is too much. He's ten years older than I am, at least. I must say he doesn't look it. It's a matter of opinion. Well, that's my opinion. Well, anyway, six months ago, he was riding the waves. Oh, there, Sonny, there. I can't help what you told my but father. But Jenny, I told wife, uh, you can spare the time. Your wife would like to have a few words with you. You see, I was expecting this. But he's married to her. They told me so. Oh, no. Then he's got three wives. Bless my soul, Jenny. Jenny, I suppose you've been wondering. Quite right. We've all been wondering. You recognize Madame Spatana, then? Oh, well, sure. Oh, Sonny. Did you or didn't you tell me you are married to that girl we were just dancing with? Sure, I did. But Sonny! But this woman says you are married to her. Oh, that's perfectly true. You admit that you're married to both of them? Well, of course not. But you just said you were married to that other girl. Yes, I know. I said so. so what about Madame Spatana? 
I understand you married to her, too. Who says so? She says so. I never said so. Well, you thing. certainly did. You said I certainly did not. Well, I must say, I understand. It certainly seemed as though you did. We are all trying to confuse the issue deliberately. But I see through it. It's an order from Spinelli. Okay, he owns the joint. Come on, boys, back on the stand. You are all in a league with my husband. Everybody's looking. You needn't be so violent. Violent? I'll show you how to be violent. We are privileged to have with us this evening Madame Genya Smetana, famous Wagnerian prima donna, who will sing for us the evening star from Tannhauser. against Spinelli. First you rob him at the table, and now this. How would you like to go in on another deal with me? I listen to all propositions. Come. That song brings back such poignant memories. He played it at your dear father's funeral. Oh, was it our wedding? Wedding? Gosh, that reminds me, as if I ever forgot. Wait a minute, young man. How is it that you're involved with three different women? Senator. I can't even get involved with one woman. If you children are going to start off on your honeymoon, you better hurry up and change, darling. I know, Mum. We'll be right down. Come along, Jimmy. I'll give you a nightcap. I still don't understand any of it. To me, it's most confusing. Most. Do you know what I do when things get too complicated? I put them out of my mind completely. And in time, they clear themselves up. In time? Mm hmm. Hmm. Oh, look at that. Quarter to six. Well, we've lost 18 of our 48 hours already. Heavens. I won't be five minutes. Well, say, honey, hmm? I've got an idea. Why don't we stay here the rest of tonight and start on our honeymoon in the morning? We can't stay here with Mother and the Senator and the servants about. Oh, I wish we had an apartment. Yeah, so do I. I spoke to Dad about it. He said he'd see if he could find one for us. Of course, he's hardly had time as yet. I know. Don't worry, darling. We can be in Briar Pit in an hour or so. Oh. <laughs> Why waste even an hour or two? But it wouldn't be wasted. After all, we'd be alone together. Oh. oh. Hello? Yes? Oh, very well. What's the matter? Oh, I've got to hurry. Well, what's the big idea? I'm an air raid warden. I've got to report for duty. Yeah, but darling, you can't go now. But I'll be back in less than an hour. An hour? Remind me to get one of those for my bathroom. Nice quiet spot, this. Hello, honey. Oh, very high class. But nobody's liable to spot us here. Hiya, babe. Hi, Colonel. Uh, hey. Here is your slip. Thanks. It's a good thing I'm leaving town tomorrow before Spinelli tracks me down. Now maybe you won't want to go when you find out what I have in mind. You've got to unload this on Peter Warrington III. Atlas International Copper? Oh, honey, it's pretty, but he'd have to be a moron to buy it. We've got to convince him it's value. Same trick we worked on that guy in St. Louis. Could be. I could always get the phony Wall Street Chronicle printed. Uh-huh, and I... Go could... back later, boy. Yes, sir. I could put up the ten grand for front money. And Sonny can handle the negotiations. Uh-oh, would he come in on a deal like this? Well, not if he knew. We've got to fool him. After all, he's getting his own money back. We've got to make him believe that Atlas International Copper has struck a rich vein. The newspaper gag will do it. That's right. Same cut? How about it? Same cut. Wonderful. Here's where I get that mink coat I've been wanting. I've been wondering who's going to pay for it. Okay, you get a mink coat, too. Say, that girl is good. He's got a hat, big a wonderful chapeau. The man with a big sombrero is strictly on the beam. And every fair muchacha there is crazy after him. For when it rains, when it pours, they get under his big wonderful sombrero. When it's hot, as a door. Every lady loves the shady cavalier. 
They all come around the market to gather around his car. They push and shove for making love with him. He's such an art. This man with the big sombrero, no bigger than his heart. This is all your fault, but your own husband stole your diamond clip to give it to another woman. Didn't you want to know that? No, and don't keep reminding me. I could be so happy, but you made me quarrel with him, so now I have to walk out. I made you? I have some pride. What else could I do? He's no good anyway. He never was. Your divorce will be wonderful publicity. My divorce? Yes. Who says I'm going to divorce? But you must divorce him. I've already given the story to the newspapers while you were packing. I never divorce him. Do you hear? Never. I love him, the dog. <laughs> then why have you packed? Why are you leaving? <laughs> to scare him. I'm only taking a few things for overnight. Do you think I give up my new flat that I have just furnished? My souvenirs, my paintings, my wallpapers. Look at that. Make the order for me. Wagner and his family having a picnic. That's Cosima, and that's Siegfried, and that's cousin Johanna. Ah, Wagner, Wagner, he's my inspiration. <laughs> Will you, Bob? I got a liberty pass. What? Oh, you poor darling. It's Janie. Oh, Janie. Janie. You've been gone for hours. I know. It's morning. Our wedding night is over. I know. If I ever get a crack at Hitler, oh, I... Oh, never mind, Sonny. We've got almost half your leave left. We'll crowd enough happiness into those few hours to last us for months. The main thing is we've got each other now. I'll know wherever you are that you're thinking of me, and you'll know wherever I am that I'm thinking of you. Well, it'll be kind of nice to have a little married life to remember, too, you know. I mean, like keeping house together. What newspaper to take? What's wrong with the furnace? Oh, I know. There? We'll have all that someday. All those heavenly little difficulties that draw two people closer together. Janie. That's 9.30. What are we waiting for now? Well, this is a swell gag, but I'm getting kind of tired of it. Hello. Oh, hello, Dad. Yeah, sure, go ahead. Make it snappy, will you? We're just about to shove off. Now, listen, Sonny. I've got to see you at once about that copper stock. I can't tell you details because Janie might tell her mother, and her mother might tip Peter off and spoil everything. Just tell her it's urgent and a big surprise for her. Surprise? Yeah, but that... Well, Dad, but... Well, okay, if you're sure it'll only take a few minutes. Yes, I'll meet you. Okay, the Beverly Arms, yes. Yes, Dad, I'll, I'll come alone. Yeah. Oh. Janie! Chronicle Extra, ladies, Wall Street Chronicle Extra, 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 Wall Street Chronicle, sir. Now, listen, son, how would you like to make ten bucks? Gee! Well, a couple of friends of mine will be along here in a minute. I'll give you ten bucks to settle this paper as a gag. You load discovered at Atlas International Copper Mine. They wouldn't fall for that, would they? Well, I'm gambling ten bucks if they will. Okay. How will I know them? Well, now, one of them is a great big, tall, handsome blonde sailor, and the other's just an ordinary, plain pudding face guy. <laughs> Do you understand? Sure, yes, sir. Extra Wall Street Chronicle, extra, extra Wall Can I help you, sir? I just want to establish a credit here so I can pull my orders in. Oh, certainly, sir. To what amount? Oh, say, uh, $10,000. In what name, sir? Uh, Sunny Fife. Sunny Five. That's right, Sunny Five. I'll get you a receipt. You certainly do get around. Oh, there 
he is. That's splendid. Be meticulous, it pays. You get a $15 raise from today. Well, hello, Sonny. Hello, Dad. You remember Peter Warrington. The third? Certainly. Say, I want that stock from Peter, as you suggested, and I got the whole thing for $1.65. Quite a bargain. My taxi fare. I just came along to see what he's gonna do with it. Well, stick around and you'll see. I didn't know you were connected with this firm. Well, very few people do. There you are, Dad, 100 shares. Now, how much was it I promised you? $100 a share. Right. A hundred dollars a share for Atlas International Copper? You haven't read your morning paper. Hey, boy. Where are you going? I'm taking these papers up to Miss Fink in Mr. Haywood's office. Well, hurry. Don't you know Mr. Haywood's waiting? Mr. Haywood died last week. Died? Why doesn't anybody tell me these things? You see, a hundred shares at a hundred dollars a share, that's... Uh... Mr. Price, that's awesome. Yes? Here's your receipt. Thank you, my boy. You've been very quick and efficient. And I shall mention it personally to Mr. Bowden. You wait here a minute, son, and I'll have our cashier make you out a check for this. New load discovered at Atlas International Copper Mines. There it is. Uh-huh. Hurry up. Yeah, I beg your pardon. Goodbye. I just established a credit here for $10,000. Please make out a check for the full amount. But you just paid in the $10,000 a few minutes ago. That is right. May I ask why you changed your mind? You may. I sometimes do, so I won't get into a rut. Oh, I see. Make it out to uh, Sunny Fire. Throw that in the wastebasket. This is the most spectacular strike in 10 years, and it is generally predicted that Atlas in it that Atlas International Copper Stock will soar to new heights on the strength of this discovery. Is your check made out for $10,000 to Mr. Sonny Fife? That's exactly right. There you are. Oh, gosh, Dad, thanks. Let me have a look at that. It's a Boutland Company check, all right. Anytime you get hold of any more of that stock, just bring it in. We're on the market for all we can pick up. Now, you'll have to excuse me. I've got to see Boutland on a rather pressing matter. Flash Gordon's in an awful mess. I beg your pardon? Thank you very much. Who was that man? I haven't an idea. I know that. I wonder what he wanted. Maybe to light a cigar. Hey, sailor. Your father working today for a change? Yes, you want him? No, thanks, honey. I just want to see him. I, uh, I have some stock for him. Atlas International Copper? Mm-hmm. A romantic souvenir. Well, he just stepped into Mr. Bowden's office. Come on, I'll find him for you. <laughs> Hello. Did you bring me that stock? A thousand years. A friend gave it to me as a going-away gift, and then he went away. Just in time, too. You don't know it, but even the five and ten cent store wouldn't handle this stuff until today. Really? Well, how much do you want for it? As much as I can get for it. But I'll take $50 a share. Well, that's more than I expected to pay. That's more than I expected to get until I heard that you wanted it. Very well, then. $50 a share. Mr. Bowden, you know that man that was just in here? No. Who was he? I don't know. But he's just bought a hundred shares of Atlas International Copper at a hundred dollars a share. The man must be mad. And now he's dickering for a thousand more at fifty. Well, the stock is worthless. It was, but not now. Look at this. New low discovered at Atlas International Copper Mines. Very well, then. Fifty dollars a share. That'll be an even fifty thousand. I'll get you a check for it. Oh, wait a minute. I don't want a check. Oh, but I'm afraid we don't carry such large sums in cash, do we, Bowden? Oh, certainly not. Well, it was nice seeing you. But well, you can cash a Boughton and company check anywhere. The crocuses are lovely in the park. All right, if you don't mind waiting, I'll go to the bank and get cash. Come along, Sonny. Uh, thanks very much, Boughton. I'll give you 55 a share for that stock. Oh, but I, I couldn't do that, could I? Well, 60 then, and you can come right along with me now to my bank and get the money. Oh, but Colonel Fife would be cross with me if, if he didn't get this stock. Well, I'll sell it to him later on if he really wants it badly. What do you think, Mr. Bowden? Well, Sonny, you've done your part of the deal very well, so in fact you go to join Janie. Well, at least I've got 24 hours of my honeymoon left. Taxi! Janie! Janie! Mrs. Fife is gone, sir. What do you mean, gone? Gone where? I don't know, sir, but out she went, bag and baggage, just after Mr. Peter left her. What? Mrs. Prescott might know something, sir, if she can remember. Where is she? Well, she is gone, too, sir, with the senator. Oh. But they'll be back. I'm afraid you'll have to wait. What do you think I've been doing? Mm -hmm. 
Are you in here, my lamb? No, I didn't expect to see you here. Well, I didn't expect to see you here. Well, I just moved in. So I see. I hope you're comfortable. Well, not yet, but I think I can make it fit to live in. It has possibilities. You're not being too optimistic. Well, I'll be able to tell better when I get rid of some of this junk. Oh, it was sweet of you to take this apartment for us. Yes, wasn't it? I knew the instant Peter said he was going to meet Sonny here, that this was the surprise Sonny mentioned. So I thought I'd surprise the both of you and just move right in. Well, you certainly surprised me. I thought I'd get settled and take a nap before Sonny got here, but I simply couldn't rest in all this disorder. It wasn't like this before you came. Oh, say, do you know what I think? Some woman left this apartment in a hurry. Lots of her clothes were still in the cupboard in the bureau drawers. The police were probably after her. And judging by her things and this perfume, I can guess why. That perfume costs $50 a bottle. Good heavens, it's you again. How in the world did you get in here? With my latch key. You have a latch key to my flat? Your flat? So he has installed you here now, the moment my back is turned. Oh, gain you my land, that is exactly... You can't pull my wool over my eyes this time. My clothes, my best hats and dresses. Oh, I'm so sorry, I had no idea. So many of them were out of style. What? We'll take this, for instance. I paid $200 for the dress. But how long ago? A month ago. Oh, I saw that model almost two years ago. Oh, you must be mistaken. That's a very smart frock. What do you know about it? Well, I don't know anything Quite about it. Of course, you took that off. What have you doing? There, that's better, don't you think? You have ruined it. And this hat. Supposed to be amusing. Well, it is. I suppose this is supposed to be amusing, too. Sonny! Sonny! Hello. You got your hat on. Oh, thanks. This time you have gone too far, renting my flat to this woman, letting her wreck my clothes. Oh, and look. Look at my beautiful new mink coat. Oh, you're an old darling to give it to me. I, oh, help. Oh, I, I didn't see you. Now, I know what you're thinking, but you're wrong. Maybe you can explain this. Well, of course. We're, we're business partners, see? Not this woman? Oh, he's my daddy. What? I was afraid you wouldn't marry me if you knew the truth. You know, I'm not 42. You don't think I ever believed that, do you? Well, then you two are married. Yes. Unfortunately. Mother! What? <gasps> oh, but then this diamond clip is really yours. <laughs> yes, but you must keep it as a wedding gift. Oh, I wouldn't think of such a thing. <laughs> but I insist. Hello? Hello, Dad. Dad, is Janie there? Yes, uh, she's moved in. It seems there's been some small misunderstanding. I know, I just heard about it. Gosh. That was Sonny. Where is he? He's still at your house. Oh, good heavens, I must dress and get over there at once. Goodbye, Daddy. How, oh, how far to the museum? Two blocks over. Okay, I've got to meet my wife there. Hi, right, taxi, wait a minute. Sorry, but this is very urgent business. You'll have to drop it. It won't be far out of your way. Jump in. Anything for a man of service. Thank you. Beverly Owens. But I still don't understand where all the money came from. <laughs> I sold the copper stock. I thought you said the stock was worthless. It is. But we made Peter think it isn't. Peter? That's the other fellow that Janie didn't marry. Oh. Thanks. Thanks very much. Pleasure anytime. Hey, taxi. Would you mind dropping me somewhere? I'm in such a rush. Well, surely. Where are you going? Oh, thanks so much. Have him our place. Oh, that's funny. I just came from there. I get... Well, where's Janie? She just went home to join you. Oh, gosh. Johnny, just a minute. I understand everything now. Here's the money back for your stock. Gosh, Dad, thanks. Well, you got it back just like you said you would. Now, how about a little drink on it, huh? Oh, I, no, thanks. I just want to get home. A little drink party. first. Come on, a little appetizer, huh? Come on, let's get out of here before another invasion. Come on. Mr. Fife. Where's Mr. Fife? He just rushed out a few minutes ago. Rushed out? In an awful hurry. And your mother went a few minutes later. She said she was going to see the new apartment. Taxi! Can you live through this? I'm sorry, I've got to go back. Oh, why can't you drop me at the museum? But that's out of my way. But my, my wife is waiting there. How long have you been married? Oh, eight years. She'll wait. Yeah, I'm afraid so. 
Hello. Oh, hello, dear. Janie isn't with you? No. Isn't she with you? No, we missed each other. Well, why don't you go and get her? Oh, I'm on my way. Oh, will you phone her, please, and tell her to wait there? Yes, that's a good idea. And here's your money back for the stock, just as Dad promised, and Janie has the money that you lost at the 59th <laughs> Sonny, dear, wait. We, we came to explain about the money. Oh, well, not now, but please. Listen, There's no darling, time. Listen, Peter and I just concocted that story. He didn't take my T&W stock, and I didn't really lose 50000 at the 59 Club. We just made that up. You just made that up? Yes. But where did you get that Atlas International Copper Stock? Oh, he just gave me that to make the story more plausible. And then bought it back from Leslie for $70,000? Certainly not. I never bought it back. I didn't think it mattered who bought it as long as I sold it. Who did buy it? Boughton. The president of Boughton and Company. Yes, he outbid me. Then we swindled him out of all this money. Dad. Do you mean that there really wasn't a new lord discovered at the Atlas International Copper Mines? Why, of course there wasn't. But you didn't ask Bout to buy that stock. He horned in trying to jip you out of it. Well, just the same, all this money's got to be given back. I'll take care of it, Sonny. Oh, thanks, Dad. Oh, please, phone Janie, will you? Oh, you have been sweet. Psst, get going quick. My motor's dead. Oh, I'm not surprised. <laughs> Janie! Janie! Janie, what? Hurry, can't you, before they get through playing tag? Taxi! Oh, hello. Back to that fireplace. Say, so what do you do, just ride back and forth? Mm-hmm, passes the time. I was only six when I first sang uh, in public. And even then, the critics said I should go far. Oh, I can understand that. Mm. You sing too, mm. no? Mm. You answer your own questions, don't you? <laughs> ah, the bells. I love bells. Telephone bells. Doorbells. I find them so exciting. Come in. Press. News. Tell us about your divorce, Madam Smetana. There is going to be no divorce. But your manager telephoned us. Come in. You can see for yourself. My husband will give you a drink. Hey, that's not a bad idea. Gentlemen from the press, darling. Help yourselves, boys. Step right up. So long. Thanks a lot. We'll see you again sometime, we hope. I don't doubt it. I'm not taking any more chances. I'm walking. OK, 680. What? Six. We're off to Briarcliff, Flory. Tell Mother, will you? I will if you like, madam. But there's so little time left. If I was you, I wouldn't want to spend any more of it in motor cars. What would you do, Flory? Nothing wrong with Miss Janie's apartment right here. That's right, there isn't. Thanks, Flory. Well, I certainly had a lot of fun for it. I waited so long for you at that museum. They began to take me for a regular exhibit. Where have you been? I wouldn't dare to tell you. Where are they? Miss Jenny and Mr. Hawson, Yes, 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 of course. I must see them at once. Has anything happened, sir? Uh, good news. I've arranged his transfer to another ship, but he must leave immediately. Immediately? Yes, yes. Where are they? Well, they... They've gone... Come, come, come. To Briarcliff. Briarcliff. Bad luck. Yes, sir. You know, we have a lot in common. So? You're a Wagnerian singer? I'm a Wagnerian singer. Where have you sung Wagner? I sang Tannhauser at college. Tannhauser? Which role did you sing? I was the third pilgrim from the left in the pilgrim's chorus. I'll show you. <laughs> 